Okay, let's take a look at PR20-4B, which is very similar to the problem that you have for your homework today. So I'm going to walk through this problem. I'd recommend that you print out a copy of this problem if you don't have a physical textbook so that you can have it there to look at, and that you print out two copies of the cost of production report template and maybe do this with me as I walk through it. So this problem is asking us to come up with a four-column account, so a general ledger detail for the work in process account for the rolling department for September and for October. Now, in order to be able to do that, I know that I'm going to need to, the credit to the department for what I'm transferring out, so I have to do a cost of production report to get that number. So let's work on September 1st. So just read through this information, and then we'll start working on the, the report itself. So it looks like I start out with 2,600 units in beginning work in process. The material comes in at the beginning, so I had, it had all the material in it. It was one quarter or 25% complete with respect to conversion costs, and they give us the dollar value of that. And then we received uh, 28,900 units from the department before us, so that's how much we started into production. And then this verbiage here is a little bit different than what we've seen in past problems, so I'm going to read it here. During September, 2,600 units in process on September 1st were completed, and of the 28,900 that entered the department, so that we started during the month, all were completed except 2,900 that were in that were four-fifths completed, so they were in ending work in process. So if I started 28,900 into production during the period and I finished everything except 2,900, then I must have started and finished 26,000 during the period. So we're approaching that number from kind of the back end rather than the front end like we've done on other problems. And then they give me some cost for what was incurred during the month. So let's first look at uh, the month of September. So in this case here, I've got a proper header there, what month I'm talking about, that becomes important. And so for whole units, I started out with 2,600 units uh, in beginning work in process. I started another 28,900 into production that I got from the department before me. So I'm responsible for determining what happened to 31,500 units. So let's come down next to the equivalent units category. So here I've got beginning work in process, so it was 25% complete. I think it's easier to use percentages and fractions. And uh, that was 2,600 units. Here's that 26,000 that I started and completed, and it said I had 2,900 in ending work in process that were incomplete. I add these three numbers together, I get 31,500. I can verify that equals that, so I'm probably good. Where most students make a mistake is this line right here. If that line is wrong, then this number is going to be different than that number, and I know I should stop. So the 2,600 that were in beginning work in process, they were 100% done with respect to direct materials. I didn't have to add any, so that's zero. And they were 25% done with respect to conversion costs. So I had to do the other 75% during this month. So 2,600 times 75% is 1,950. I get 26,000 credit on both those fronts for what I started and completed. The ending work in process, 2,900, I had to put all the materials into that. And I got 80% done with respect to conversion costs. So 80% times 2,900 is 2,320. I add these up and I get the equivalent units of production for materials and for conversion costs. Then I look at the cost. So the cost incurred during the month, and they gave us that in the problem, uh, was 462400 for materials, and it was 260322 So I added together the direct labor and the factory overhead to get that figure. So I had this much in total cost. So I can take the material cost I incurred and divide it by the materials that I produced, equivalent units. I get $16 per unit. Now, for conversion costs, I take what I incurred for conversion costs, I divide it by what I got done with respect to conversion costs, and I get $8.60. So now we can allocate our cost, okay? So the total costs that I'm responsible for are the costs that were in beginning work and process, the problem gave us that, plus the cost I incurred. So I'm responsible for saying what happened to $768,547. Now I'm going to allocate that to the units that I transferred out to the next department 
and how much is remaining in my department at the end of the month. So the first thing that got transferred out was the 2600 that I started with at the beginning of the month because we're doing a FIFO assumption. So the cost of those 2600 units is the cost I started with plus the cost to finish it. So I started with 45825 I didn't have to add any materials. I did have to add conversion costs. So I had 1,950 units that I had left to do on beginning, on beginning work and process times 860, that's 16,770. So I have a total cost for those 2,600 units of 62,595. Next, I have the units that I started and completed during the month. So 26,000 times 16 is 416. 26,000 times 860 is 223,600. So I have a cost of those 26,000 units of 639,600. I add that together. The cost of what left my department and went to the next department was 702,195. Now the ending work in process, I had 2,900 units with respect to material times 16. That's 46,400. And I had 2320 with respect to conversion costs. That's 19,952. So I had total cost and ending work in process of 66,352. I add these two numbers together, I get 768,547. So that allows me to do, let me find my paper here, it allows me to do the general ledger column for the first month. So I'll take the information from this cost of production report and I'll use it here. I've got 2,600 units, a debit balance of 45,825. That's my beginning balance. I incur materials. I incur labor. I apply factory overhead. And now here is my credit, 702,195, transferring costs to the next department. What's my ending balance? 66,352. And I can double check here. That equals my ending inventory here. So everything is good. So I want to take a look at the next month now. So the next month, I'm going to remember that the ending work in process of September is going to become the beginning work in process of October. And then it says here, during October, the units in process at the beginning of the month were completed, and of the 31,000 units that entered the department, so that we started, all were completed except 2,000 units. So that means that we started and completed 29,000 units. So I'll do the top part here. I'll go through this a little bit more quickly. So I have 2,900 in beginning work in process. Remember here, that was our ending work in process from the previous month, so it becomes our beginning of the next month. 2,900, I put 31,000 into production. I'm responsible for what happened to 33,900. So I come down here for my equivalent units. 2,900 beginning, I started and completed 29,000. I had 2,000 in ending work in process. It equals 33,900. I do the equivalent unit calculations, just like we did in the first month, no difference there. I take a look at the cost that I incurred during the month, and I divide that by the equivalent unit, so I get a cost per equivalent unit for materials of $16.50, conversion cost $8.80. I have total costs I'm responsible for, the cost in beginning work and process. Remember that that was the cost in our ending work and process from the previous month plus what I incurred during this month. So I've got this much money that I'm responsible for. So the first thing I'm gonna do is figure out what had to take place for me to complete the beginning work and process. So I had to add conversion costs to it. So I've got 71,546 for that. I have the 29,000 that we started and completed. So I have total cost of 805,156 for what transferred out. That will be my credit to work and process. And then ending work in process, I've got 2,000 times 1650 for 33,000, 800 times 880 for 7040. So I've got $40,040. I add these together, I get 845,196, which equals this number. So we're probably all good. So now I can take a look at the general ledger here. And again, my October 30, uh, my 
the balance at the end of October, at my starting point, is my ending point from the previous month. I add the material cost incurred, I add the direct labor incurred, I add the factory overhead applied, I credit that 805156 for the cost transfer to the next department, and I end up with $40,040, which is my ending work in process. So the last thing I wanted to show you is just some decision making that we can do from this. So when I go back here and look at uh, September, I see I had cost of uh, material at $16 per unit and conversion cost at $860. Now that's an accurate reflection of what I incurred during the month relative to what I did for those two categories. So now I can look at what it was in the next month. So I can see the direct materials went from $16 up to $16.50. That's not good. I need to look into that. And my labor cost from went from $860 to $880. So I need to also look at that. I have a uh, increasing cost in both categories. So I hope that helps you. I'll post these solutions on um, Canvas as well so you can print these out. Uh, I think that'll help you with PR20-4A. Thank you.